So the first thing we see when I walk up to this, uh, this is actually getting shipped to the Philippines, but they want to know if it's working and what else. The first thing you notice, 1970, 1969, and I'm not sure exactly what year. Yeah, totally missing. This has been worked on before. Where's the auxiliary fan? Okay, one thing. Next thing you know, retrofit fittings. I, I just took the fittings off because I'm going to test the gas that's in there because somebody else worked on it. Uh, what else do you notice when you come down here? This is not the German six millimeter fans. This was probably the uh, USA installed one. And this is the three eighths tubing and there's very few tubes. You could see it's kind of a shortened condenser, not a full length condenser. And if you look at the fins, there's only like 12 fins. If I've got one inch here, there's like 11 or 12 fins per inch very very low performance very low cooling performance the ac in the right conditions work perfect they were old r12 and everything r12 could work really fairly good with this one but this is not a candidate for retrofitting over with this condenser in extremely hot uh, climates you would want to keep this one r12 especially if it's missing and you're not going to put back on or add a fan come over here and uh, this one I was gonna do a few weeks ago but then they discovered there was a radiator leak so they did a radiator but the only problem was was they went through all the trouble to take off the fan the radiator and do everything but reused the old thermal fan clutch and yeah I slipped my camera down inside here to make sure it was the original old fan clutch this has hundred twenty one thousand miles and it's 1969, 1970, change the fan clutch, especially if you don't have a electric fan backup on this one with this really bad condenser. This is a good candidate to switch over to micro channel. But if you were to get a micro channel one, try to get the biggest one you can and see if you could get one that could go all the way from here, do a little modification and uh, go as far as you can. It looks like you can get back his as far as you can get that way and maybe even add a subcooler to it. You remember Mercedes had the big giant subcooling subcooler right down inside here. You can hide it. So that in note, then what else do I notice? I noticed they have a new dryer on here. So somebody worked on here. Uh, what do else do I notice? There's something I noticed if this had a electric fan, there's some way to activate that electric fan. If you guys are familiar with some of these old system, what they had was they had a add on uh, temperature switch and it had clamps and would clamp right here is pushed over this line right on this metal piece or this I can't even remember which one right now, but it sensed the temperature. Say I would put it right here because this is your hot gas discharge from the compressor where you have your highest temperature and when let's say it's cinched it was a hundred i'm going to just make up a number out of my head 170 degrees fahrenheit it would close the contacts energize the relay to turn on the electric fan it's sensing that you're either adding stop and go traffic in real hot weather or you need some extra airflow and so by that switch would contact it's missing here i don't i don't see any form for the ac when it overpressurized by coming to an idle when this is not working correctly to compensate by throwing a high output fan on here so that needs to be added back into the system or added if it was never there in the first place anything else i notice um that's about it their switches are not working inside so i'm gonna have to bypass the compressor clutch and get it working the blower is not working and all he wants to know is does it is it mechanically sound it doesn't leak and it will work so i'm going to bypass not working not working so i'm just going to bypass it to prove the mechanics of the ac is working and then the guys over at the mercedes specialty place they'll dig into taking apart the dash and if the switch needs to be replaced or there's a fuse or a wire corrosion or the blower motor is bad they'll take care of all that and i'm just looking at this this ground right here somebody added in um take a little closer look at that sucker hmm. so pretty good in here everything 121,000 miles it's not horrible for uh
1969 or 1970. 121,000. Me, personally, if I wasn't going to change the dash because I want to make it look original, I would uh, probably change the blower motor, modify, make my own bracket and put a DC brushless inside there. Uh, hop up the performance for better sensible. If I'm not in a real humid climate, I could blow more air by ramping up with a better blower motor and a more aggressive squirrel cage fans with more pitched blades for more CFM and just have multiple more speeds so I can turn it down to either the old factory setting and if I wanted like turbo power charge where it's like blowing my hair back, uh, I can turn it up. What else would I do to this? Oh, high output fan with that sensor I was talking about. Uh, if I was doing a retrofit on this, you want to do the right way other than flushing and everything like that. Remove the compressor and you have your oil drain plugs over here. Drain out the old oil, put fresh oil back in. Um, this turn smooth so that's good so i know somebody at least had it working good and we'll go on from here uh, i'm going to test with the refrigerant analyzer and then i'm going to go through high pressure nitrogen decay test and vacuum and all that charter back up and see what we get out of the system video number two coming up see you guys later